when the administration was directed to prepare the renewal petition, they were told by the board to leave the original petition language intact as much as possible and limit changes to correct grammar, verb tense, and issues of legal compliance. Uh, as the union president, I'm here to speak to a couple items that I'm a little disappointed were not uh, worded differently or left untouched uh, without reason. Uh, we are disappointed that changes made uh, kind of fall outside of this description. The teachers voted before the original charter petition was finished that our site would be a union school. And in our original language, the qualification for being a teacher representative on our governing board required union membership. On page 81 in your renewal petition, the wording has been changed to not require union membership for the teacher representative. There were no grammatical or verb tense errors in the original language, nor was this a legal requirement. All of our teachers are members of the union at the school site. The board, in a way, went against its own directive in accepting that change in language. This was pointed out early in the process and on various occasions, but we were not, uh, we were not met with changing the language, going back to the original language, even after our administration stated they didn't have a problem with language that would require the union membership for our teacher board rep. So we still don't know the real reason why this is in there the way it's written. Um, in addition to this, on page 114 and 115, there is a reference to academic work during suspension. This language was not in the original petition to begin with. In our negotiated contract with the school, we have an article that states that the provisions of the Ed Code will be followed. And in section 48913, the Ed Code provides that a teacher may require a student to complete assignments and or test missed during, the, during a suspension. The language in the renewal petition contradicts this provision by stating that completing assignments or work during a suspension occurs when administration deems it appropriate and a student can be placed on an independent study contract. I'm not sure if a petition is supposed to have language that contradicts a collective bargaining agreement. We were told that this language was a requirement for reauthorization, and I've looked into this and found no evidence to support it. This was also pointed out to the board in the public hearing. One of the suggestions presented to the governing board by various stakeholders was to use original petition language unless it met the criteria established by the, by the board of a grammar correction or legal compliance. And when I talk to people about this, they keep asking me, what do you want? I would like to go back to the original language in those two areas because I never heard anybody complain that there was a problem with it in the first place. So I don't understand why it had to be in the renewal petition even when it was pointed out that we, uh, we, we prefer as a union to have it different. Thank you. The uh, next speaker is David Chu. Good evening. I'm the current uh, Vice Mayor of Clayton, and at the time of the charter authorization, I was the mayor and part of the steering committee for the charter. I have remained an active uh, member of the charter community, staying on the Student Services Committee uh, throughout the three years here, and being actively involved in issues that come up. You have all the evidence before you to show that unequivocally this charter should be renewed. The community is overwhelmingly in support of the charter. And I want to just briefly point out three things that set in my mind why this charter is such a great thing for our community. <clears throat> the first is we now have uh, people clamoring to get into our schools that used to only go to Toronto Letter Day South. I have at least five friends who have one kid in uh, Toronto Letter Day South and their other kid, child is now going to Clayton Valley. Okay, that was unheard of when we were in the district. That is an, an amazing thing. And we have people not only from throughout the uh, Bay Area wanting to get into the school, but we have our traditional Catholic school uh, parents that are now looking at Clayton Valley and saying, this is an education I can send my kids to. That is phenomenal. The second aspect is that as a student services committee and the several other committees that we established at the charter, we have unprecedented ability to provide input from the students, the community, the parents, and the teachers that we never had a voice in the district. We have a freshman transition program that was developed with the teachers in the student services committee, with the parents, with the students, 
and this has been an overwhelming success. They have developed um, tracking mechanisms to keep kids on focus for the four years if they are there. Get in their freshman year what their goals are. Follow them each year and make sure that they stay on those goals. It is unbelievable that the parents, the students, the teachers, the staff, of the Student Services Committee, of the Upper Operations Committee, of those committees, they have a voice now. You never had that in Mount Diablo Unified School District, and that is a wonderful thing for the charge. And the third thing that's already been addressed uh, in part, but that is the parent volunteers. We were always shut out of being able to volunteer when we were in the district. We now have over 260, I think it is now, parent volunteers. We get weekly bulletins or emails saying we need volunteers for the following items. And every single time we get parents to step up and do that. The community is 100% behind this charter. The charter has provided amazing opportunities for community and parent involvement. And this is a wonderful thing. And it should be authorized for 20 years, not just five. Thank you. Uh, the next speaker is Christy Downs. I sincerely hope the board will take into first 